and moments later, shots rang out, and the next morning I cleaned my friend's brains off my lawn. Back in 1981, a very young Henry Rollins stormed the stage of the legendary punk band Black Flag. He took the mic, and the rest is history. He blew the band away, they made him lead singer, he quit his job at an ice cream store, and he hasn't looked back. Whatever Henry Rollins does, the dude does it hardcore. Music, acting, he's written over 25 books, he's an anti-racism campaigner, a journalist. He travels the world speaking, no family, no partner, but where does the drive for all of it come from? Can I just say, Henry Rollins, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um, you once said in an interview that your life is paranoia and fear and you're just trying to not get hit. Yeah. Is that still true? Yeah. Uh, anger and fear, fear of failure drives me. Paranoia of things going wrong around me drives me. I, I am driven by a lot of like really kind of ugly anger. And so I have a lot of that in me and it comes from a, a father who was terrifying and uh, teachers who yelled at me told me I'd never be anything. And so I, I descend from the sky and land on things really hard. And I go at everything with that amount of fury. And I'm not saying I'm gonna hit anybody and I'm not mad at you, I'm quite happy to be here with you <laughs> and answer any question to the best of my ability. But I go at everything like, you think I can't? Hey, you wanna try acting? Yeah, I'll try acting. Can you act? No. <laughs> so let's go. I've seen Sons of Anarchy. You can act. Thank you. Fair is for losers. I'd rather win. Why was your dad terrifying? Uh, he was racist. He would say incredibly awful, unrepeatable things about women. Mm. And when I was like really inappropriately young, he would tell me how to deal with women. And I, I cannot repeat what he said. Not even, I, it's so awful. It's misogyny on steroids. It's the King Kong of misogyny. And um, I went, wow, we're not alike. I'm not like you. And he would say things about non-white people. Mm. And I'm like, wow, I, I'm not like this. You are terrifying to me. And I would go visit him on the weekends and walk on rice paper, conversations. I would just sit there like, wow, please Sunday afternoon, hurry up so I can get out of here. So those early experiences with, with family, have they affected, do you think, the way you think about family? Yes. Uh, I have no interest in making a family. Yes. Uh, in my, uh, just for me, the way I have the final word is, this DNA is not going anywhere. It ends here. Because as far as I know, I'm an only child. Uh, as far as the combination of their DNA, Iris and Paul, it's never going forward. Because it ends here. And I'm not having any kids. Uh, that's just not going to happen. So you think you're going to live your life alone, in darkness, and seclusion. See, some people find that very sad. Well, uh, let's get him a box of Kleenex. <laughs> I, I don't find it sad what at all. What is it about that DNA mix that you think needs to end with you? Oh, it's faulty. I'm a really sad sack of genes. Uh, I have my father's really uncontrollable anger. And uh, it's really awful. And I, I've gotten better at curbing it, but man, it comes up out of nowhere and it's not cool. Not like I'm, you know, hitting women or kicking dogs. I don't have that. I, I just, out of nowhere, it's, it just comes up I'm like, wow, whoa, 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 go back into your cave. And you're worried about passing that on? Oh, hell yeah. I would never inflict an innocent person with this. No way. Do you know, it is, it is possible to, to produce children and improve. Upon but you, you. you roll the dice. Because I'm a lot like my dad. The more unenviable aspects of me, of which there are many, it's all from him. I'm not excusing my bad behavior, but I remember his tone of voice and his, his body posture at times, and I see myself do that. I'm like, wow, okay. This can never be repeated. Would you have been better off if you didn't know your dad? Uh, no. No, because he informed me politically. Okay. Like, never going to be racist, never going to be misogynist. <laughs> I know what I don't want to be. Never going to be homophobic, because look at what it looks like. Look how terrifying and awful it, it is. Always afraid of the backhand. Always afraid of the backhand. I don't want to get in the face of Is there a moment when, when death became real for you? Yeah, when I had a gun to my head and moments later shots rang out and the next morning I cleaned my friend's brains off my lawn when my friend was killed near me. And that's when death was very, very real. It's never left me. 
and that's why I am basically numb to fear. And, and let, let's, let's take a spend a minute with this idea. There's a difference between a lack of fear and bravery. Bravery is like, I'll save you. A lack of fear is like, yeah, I'll go there. Like, yeah, can you hear the gunfire? That, something's on fire over there. I'm gonna go check it out. Are you crazy? Probably. That's a lack of fear. So I lost that awareness after I was shot at and after I had to deal with the sheer disgusting remnants of a dead body, the terrifying reality of mopping it up. And that was 25 years ago. What is it most people don't understand about the awful reality of death? Uh, you are forever smudged by it. You know, someone took a marker and marked you all up. You're, you never get it off you. And it affects all of your relationships and your actions that it has for me. I am now a, a more hollow and kind of disconnected person after that. It's very, uh, human relationships are difficult and part of that is from that event. It's, uh, it's awful. It, and it remains so. I think, of, I think of my friend every day. I can't not. Unable to express the pain of your distress. You withdraw deeper inside. Hey, do you spend more time thinking about the future or the past? The future. Why is that? Because I want it. Because uh, the past holds all of your mistakes and humiliations. The future holds whatever you can make it. And so the past has already been determined. And it also holds all your victories and all your accomplishments. Mm. But all the bad stuff is there too, so why dwell? Learn from it and move on. Don't ignore it and don't say it didn't happen. Don't deny it. But don't, you don't have to dwell in it and be miserable. Uh, that happens enough to us adults already. You, you mm. see someone from your past, you're like, ah, oh, it still hurts. But the future is ready for you to not make those mistakes and to make it great. Now that I have less future than I do past, I seek to make, because I'm well over the 50 yard line of mortality <laughs> at 55. You know, there's no way I'm getting 110 out of this. Uh, I don't know. You never know. You seem pretty energetic, Thank I'm you. sad. Well, it might just burn me out. <laughs> but knowing I have less in front of me than behind me, why not be cool with it? Don't, I'm gonna die soon. Like, oh look, you got some time left. Rock out, like, like make it amazing. Where the past has been done, Henry Rollins, I literally could sit here and talk to you forever, but I think you might need to go do some other interviews. Okay. Well, it was thank an absolute you. Absolute pleasure talking to you. Thanks for your time. No problem.